Hello, everyone, and welcome to Souls and Stories, Jesus in Ramadan. Today, we're here to pray for Muslims and hear the stories of former Muslims who met Jesus. My name is Emily Jones. I'm a journalist with CBN News in Jerusalem. And growing up, I had a lot of Muslim friends and was super passionate about the Middle East. And that passion brought me here to Jerusalem, one of the holiest cities in the world for Muslims, Christians, and Jews. And my name is Josh, and I have been working in the Middle East for over 10 years. And I've got a passion for the people, for the land, the culture. And thank you for joining us on this prayer event. We've got some amazing guests on this program, Souls and Stories. All right, Josh, let's jump right into it. We want to introduce you to a young man who grew up in the world of Malcolm X to a passionate black Muslim family until the words of his grandfather set him on a journey to Christ. My experience in Islam, for me, it felt like boundaries and, and burdens. Walking into a church and seeing so much freedom felt so much different. God loves us and he could love us in spite of our sin. And to say that God loved me despite my sin and that he could um, walk with me in the midst of something that I felt so dirty and so unapproachable and so um, just shameful uh, was attractive to me. Tyree, thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up in a black Muslim family. Yeah, so, I mean, it was really all I knew. So, you know, growing up in a, in a Muslim family, uh, it was a lot of uh, conversation about your identity, right? This is who you are, uh, not only as a Muslim, but also as a black man. And so uh, a lot of the people that I would grow up around were Sunni Muslims. Um, and so I, I saw a lot of um, strong uh, black Sunni Muslim men uh, around me and spent a lot of time in, in the mosque. So I would go with my older brother um, and my dad. Uh, they both would take me to the mosque whenever I would see my dad. Um, that's what our life was like. And so my brother taught me um, everything about Allah, what it means for me to, you know, to prepare for prayer and to pray. And so I was brought up as a kid. Um, that was my identity, right? And so I remember walking down the street and seeing you know, it was regular for me to see women with their hijabs on or burqas uh, and men with kufis on. And so that was kind of just a part of um, the culture there in Philly. And if you've ever been to Philly, you've probably seen a lot of uh, the same thing with men, uh, women walking around in the same way. So, yeah, so that that's mostly what it was like growing up in that environment. But it was really all I knew um, at that time uh, as far as this is what my identity is and this is what my identity was. And Tyree, I watched your video. It was it was really powerful. Um, and and so your grandfather takes you to vacation vacation Bible school at a young age. Uh, is that his yeah. way of introducing you to Jesus? Yeah, I think so. I think it was you know he knew that we had been grown up. We grew up in in Islam and we're practicing that. And we had so many conversations at that point to about who God was, you know. And I was you know telling him, hey, this is who God is. Uh, God is is Allah and all of this type of stuff. And so I think he just saw an opportunity to just say, hey, these are my grandkids. I want to bring them to vacation Bible school. Um, but he was introducing me to a whole nother world that I had never seen as far as how to relate to God. And so, you know, being in a mosque where it was very solemn uh, to then being in vacation Bible school and, and hearing uh, different kids talk about Jesus and hearing them talk about the Bible and the books of the Bible, um, all of that was just so foreign to me. Um, and then having to go to church for the first time and seeing people re really worship God um, with such joy and passion. Um, and, my, and if anybody who knew my grandfather knew, he was one of the people who was singing the, the loudest. Um, and so seeing that type of joy in his face and just knowing that there was a relationship there, the relationship with God, um, it felt so different than what I had experienced uh, just growing up going to the mosque. So he... He definitely introduced me to a whole different world um, going to vacation Bible school. Yeah, Tyree, I actually want to touch on that a little bit more. What was it like that moment that you walked into a church for a first time? Um, how was it different from a mosque? Yeah, I mean, when you walk into a mosque, um, you have designated sections uh, for women and children and a space for the men. 
And so, you know, I would come in and uh, usually a really big space uh, where there's already people uh, there, you know, prostrate on the ground. Um, and so we're doing a series of, of prayers and it's very solemn, right? It's very quiet. Um, the only thing that you hear is you hear the call to prayer um, and then you'll hear the uh, the words, Allahu Akbar, right? So you hear that and then you're practicing these things and you're prostrating yourself and humbling yourself before God. So it feels like very much of a, a sacred, solemn space in a mosque. Um, whereas when you when I went into the church, it was, it just seemed like so much freedom, right? There was no, everybody wasn't doing the same thing in unison, but everybody was worshiping and worshiping so freely with joy, um, seeing people sing songs um, to God and that this could be, um, and, and praying that this could be, man, God can, in whatever space I'm in, he'll meet me here. And so it was a different type of sacredness that, that felt like so much more freedom um, in the way that they carry themselves before God. And so I think that was what was so attractive to me to seeing, oh man, it seems like um, God cares about them exactly where they are. And he has such a love and a freedom for them that they can express themselves just exactly, uh, they, they can express exactly who they are. And so um, I saw just a, a, a stark difference between um, being in a mosque and hearing a call to prayer and the solemnness of it versus being in a church and even just, Honestly, just that having the conversations with people and, and talking to them um, was a little bit more foreign because in a mosque, you're not really talking or interacting with other people. This is the space for you to interact with God. And so it, the, the, the environment um, of the two places is, is so, such a stark contrast. Mm. And Tyree, there's a critical moment in your journey. You're in your car with your grandfather and you're debating who God is. What, what did you discover mm -hmm. in that moment? Yeah. So I think in that conversation, um, what I had been taught growing up was, you know, Allah is God and Allah means God. And this is how we serve him. Right. Um, and so all the times that I had grown up going to prayer and all those types of things, you know, my grandfather's here coming and talking to me about Jesus and that Jesus is God. And I say, well, Allah means God. Um, so I know that Allah is the true God. And so as we start to argue um, kind of back and forth, you know, I'm, I'm a young kid, but I really believe in this is my identity and my family of origin. And so as we keep going back and forth about this, he mentions uh, two things which really just hit me so hard, which was, you know, when when he spoke to God, he didn't have to speak Arabic, that God was would, would understand him and that he could speak in English and God would not only hear him, but that he would answer his prayer. Right. And then he would say, man, I don't have the, the way that I pray is not um, dependent on a location. It's not dependent on me doing a certain thing. I can pray right now and know uh, right here, even as I'm driving and know that God would hear me. And there was such a relational aspect to that that I had never experienced before that made me curious at that time, but I was still kind of stubborn in the fact that this is what I was raised in and this is who I know God to be. Um, and so we got into a debate there, but it kind of set me thinking on some things and I think the, the other key part was I was able to watch his life. And so I not only heard him talk about Jesus and the, and the difference that Jesus made in his, in his life and how he could pray and have this relationship with God, but I also saw what his relationship with God was like. So I followed my grandfather into prisons as he did prison ministry. I followed him into nursing homes as he delivered groceries to elderly uh, people. Um, I also will see him uh, come, go to his church and serve. Um, he had worked for a long time uh, with his hands. And so he would, you know, fix things around the church and, and just serve. And so I saw him do these types of things. And I think that's what really started to make me curious about, man, he says he has this relationship with God and God hears him. And then I look at the outcome of his life and it seems so different than the outcome of other people that I know. And so it, it just, it was standing out to me so much. Mm, that's so beautiful, Tyree. What is it about how God deals with sin and forgiveness that drew you to Jesus? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I really came to a, a clear understanding at that time. Um, not at that time, but when I got to college, I think uh, that started my journey um, into understanding more about God. And I had a tons of questions when I started to break away from Islam about what we practice and why we practice as Christians. And so my grandfather answered a couple of questions for me. He, he gave me a, um, a Bible and said, you know, you have to investigate for yourself. And as I started to do that, I think what, what I still had, though, 
was from remnants of being a Muslim was I still had this idea of I had to be a good person, right? I had to have my works um, outweigh my bad, the bad, right? The good outweighing the bad. And so I think what the, the freedom that the gospel gave me is once I had the conviction in college that no, I, the, the good guy image that I had built up at that time seemed to be smashed and my whole identity and being a good person uh, was was in pieces and I couldn't put it back together. And it left me in, in a, a depression at the time when I was in college. And I felt like when I heard about for the first time the love of God, it was, well, I don't, right now, I don't even love myself, right? I don't even want to be here right now because my identity was built up in this thing and now I can't be that. And so because I can't be that anymore, because I'm not this good person that I'm trying to be so bad, I don't want to be here. But if God loves me like that, like you say he does, then I, I want that. I want I want that because I don't even love myself right now. And so it gave me such a freedom to be able to say, man, if God can forgive me and if he can love me in spite of the fact that I don't even love myself right now, I want that. And I want to know more about that. What, what um, God, show me more of this. And so when I heard of that, I called my grandfather immediately. I left the meeting that I was in and I said, I get it. I get it. I finally get it. Um, and I, at that moment is when I understood forgiveness and I understood the gospel. That's amazing. Now, Tyree, what was your family's reaction to you wanting to become a follower of Christ? Yeah. So I think uh, my family had a couple of different responses here. And I think um, just depending on where they were, they had different responses. So my dad really wasn't around at that time. And so he didn't he didn't know about the transition, but when he did find out, he had felt like his dad, as his dad was my grandfather, he felt like his dad stepped in where he wasn't and he felt betrayed by that. And so he felt like, you know, he stepped in and he shared this thing with me and confused me. And that, but this is how he desired to raise me and what he wanted to tell me about Islam, because he had taken me to the mosque a couple of times. And so he felt betrayed. Um, he wasn't really uh, he didn't show any animosity towards me. But he did feel betrayed by me, and he felt betrayed by his, by his father especially. Um, and then my mom had said that she, because she also would raise me in Islam, and she said that she wanted me to understand uh, and do my own studies. And she said at the end of the studies that she thought I would do about religion, she felt like I would know and, and follow Islam as the true way. And I think the most drastic of the responses out of um, all my family members was my older brother, Sharif. Um, because at this at this point, he had been to Egypt. He had studied under um, scholars um, in Islam, and he had memorized the whole Quran and learned Arabic. And so his faith was so gr uh, grounded in Islam. And so at that point, he had, he he cried in front of me, um, broke down crying in front of me. And I, I still remember and can see the moment when I told him, hey, I'm, you know, 12 years old, but I'm telling him, hey, I'm, I'm choosing to, I, I, I found God. And I'm going to choose to follow Jesus now. Now, I won't be going to the mosque with you anymore. I won't be doing any of those things. I'm different now. And he just broke down crying in front of me. And i never forget the emotion he felt or the betrayal he felt. And what he would tell me later was that he knew that according to the Quran that I committed shirk and there was no way for me to come back from that. And so I was uh, basically destined uh, for hell. And so he really grieved that and he felt like, what could he have done more so that I wouldn't end up in this place? But for me, it was confusing because I felt like I, I had found so much joy in my life and so much freedom and so much boldness to even come and tell him, hey, now I know God. Um, and so it was just such a different, um, different and confusing time for me, kind of breaking away from my family and saying, I'm not doing that anymore. But such a joy in just knowing and, and, and being on a journey to understand who Jesus was. Yeah. Tyree, you know, as a black man growing up in a Muslim family, a lot of a partial reason why your family was drawn to Islam was because it was a response to some of the racism and discrimination that you know minorities face. What would you say to somebody who might be watching right now who doesn't think that Jesus cares about racism and discrimination and minorities? What would you say to them? Yeah, I would say that. I would say that. Um... If, you, if we do even look in at the research um, and we go and research what was happening at the time when Jesus walked the earth, that there was discrimination happening even during Jesus' time. And so 
Um, if we look at uh, Jesus intentionally going to Samaria, right? Um, him going to people that would have been discriminated against, that Jesus had a heart for uh, women, uh, the Samaritan women who was there, but also Samaritans uh, at a time when people wouldn't have cared for them. And so I would say that, man, God's heart is so much for the downtrodden and oppressed, that he's He's always been about caring for those who are poor, downtrodden, oppressed, and brokenhearted. And uh, as you work through uh, the racism that you've experienced from people, uh, don't push away um, Jesus who cares. The God who sees um, El Roy is what his name is. And he sees you. He cares about you. He he knows intimately what it's like to be in that space. Um, and if you are willing to lay that burden before him, that he wants to pursue you, that he wants to he wants to take that burden for you. Um, and he wants to turn that into something that would be uh, something that God can redeem um, and God can bring joy from. And he wants to use you as someone that can speak about uh, just how much God has a love for those who have been in those types of situations. And so I would say, though you you may experience hostility from people um, in these spaces, uh, don't give up on Jesus um, and his people. And so um, I think for my family specifically, I know what I saw was that they felt like there was this space and this gap in inner city uh, communities where they didn't feel like the church was reaching them um, but the Nation of Islam and people um, practicing Orthodox Islam uh, felt like they connected in those communities to the struggle that was there. And so um, I would say now that we need more people to experience the love of Jesus um, that are able to um, mobilize into those communities and say, hey, we are here and Jesus does care. And this is how Jesus has redeemed uh, my pain as a black man that has walked through some of these things. Um, and now I've, I can tell you that I found him to be faithful, right? Um, even when I've seen people um, discriminate or show hatred towards me, uh, he has been so faithful and he's a refuge and a safe place for me. And that's so good. Tyree, what would you say to someone watching the show right now that may not feel um, the confidence or may not know how to share with Muslims? What would you say to them to encourage them to get out of their comfort zone and share with a Muslim? Yeah, I would say uh, first thing is that Muslims in generally respect what they call people of the book, right? And so um, in conversations that I've had with my older brother, um, we, we often talk about that, that there's a, there's a respect there for people, um, whether that's uh, somebody that is, from a Muslim standpoint, somebody that is Jewish uh, or a Christian, if they're people of the book, then there's a, 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 just a foundation of respect there. And I would say to, to start there, right, to start talking about um, your faith according to um, what the word says. And so um, bringing up uh, Abraham, who's the father of our faith, right? that they respect uh, Abraham as a prophet in their tradition. And so um, talking about the characteristics of the God that Abraham uh, had interacted with, right? And so just starting there, and I think also just starting with what I encounter, right? The, the relational aspect of who God is, right? What you see as you look at the story of Abraham, as you look at the story of Moses, is you see a God who initiates uh, with his people, who pursues them, uh, and who comes after them, right? Who speaks to them so that they can hear him, right? And so start to talk about the relational aspect in your own relationship and your own intimacy and communion with the Lord. Um, just at that at that standpoint, starting from that point, and just talk about man, how you've experienced God in these ways. And I think what you'll find is that a lot of uh, people uh, who identify as Muslims haven't experienced the, just the relational nature of God because. The, the view of God is so high. Um, his holiness, um, his set apartness is so high in, in Islam and in, in the Quran, but they don't know um, according to knowledge, uh, like Romans 10, 3 says. So they don't know that the relational uh, aspect of knowing God and what it's like to have a relationship with him and what it's like for him to, to know your burdens and to care about you, um, to, to experience the, the joys and uh, the lows of what it means to just walk with God on this journey. And so um, talk about the person of Jesus. Talk about how Jesus has uh, impacted you and just your relationship with him. Um, and I think those experiences uh, will cause some curiosity um, instead of going into it, wanting to debate uh, things about what the Quran and what the Bible says. 
Yeah, that's so good, Tyree. Um, can you go ahead and lead us for prayer right now? Um, people watching all around the world who want to pray for Muslims. Can you can you lead us? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Father, I just thank you, um, first of all, that your heart is for Muslims, God, that you have a heart for them, God, that you see them, God, that you genuinely and intimately care uh, for each and every uh, Muslim that may bow themselves um, before Allah, but may have a heart to really want to know um, the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so, Father, I pray that you would overwhelm uh, Muslims, God, with your presence, God, with your love, God, that they would see uh, dreams and visions about you, God, that they would no longer, God, have a zeal, um, but not according to knowledge, but a, but a zeal um, that comes from your Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit, I, I, God, I, I speak life um, and peace, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you would just reveal yourself uh, to those who right now are worshiping Allah, Lord, or those who might be on the fence and don't know. God, I pray you would, would reveal yourself in power to them just as you did uh, Abraham, just as you did me, God. You've revealed yourself in that. God, we know if you reveal yourself to someone, God, that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So, God, I speak against any, God, attacks of the enemy. God, I, I pray that you would give courage and boldness um, through your Holy Spirit for them to, to just stand up, God, for themselves and, and stand up for you, God, if they have really had an encounter with you, God, no matter what their family might say, no matter what uh, anybody else around them might do to them, God, um, that they would trust you, God, that they, as they read your word, as they hear about you, as they dream about you, as they hear your voice, God, that it would just spur them on, God, to, to just want to pursue you more, um, even into the point of just laying themselves out before you and willing to suffer for you. Um, and so, God, I pray you would just give boldness uh, to to those who are taking the step, God, and wanting to know you more. And I pray you would pursue them, God. I pray that we would see uh, those who are fasting right now, wanting to get closer to God, that they would be encountered by you through the Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Tyree, for speaking with us and sharing your story. Amen. Thank you for having me. It's been a joy. Take care, man. Take care.